What's up, people? Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today, we're going over my Ursa, this beauty of a camera right here. This is my baby. And we're going over six reasons why I love this camera. So quick disclaimer, I don't have all of the in-depth technical knowledge about the buildings and workings of this camera, but what I do have is experience in shooting time. So the six reasons why I love this camera is going to be really based around my experience um, and things that I find benefit from in having and owning this camera. So without further ado, the first reason why I love this camera is just the color science. So when I was in the market looking for a cinema camera, I obviously was looking for more of the entry level options. I wasn't looking to buy an Alexa, wasn't looking to buy a Red or anything along those lines. So my options really were the Sony FS7, the Ursa Mini Pro, the C200, uh, I think it's the Panasonic Evo 1 maybe. And something that I really, not that those cameras aren't, those cameras are gorgeous, they're beautiful, but one thing that really attracted me towards this one is the resemblance that Blackmagic made with their, their sensor to Ari's Alexa. I really love how it almost resembles the image from an Alexa. Um, this camera would be absolutely perfect as a B camera if your A cam was an Alexa, Alexa Mini, whatever it is. This would be a perfect B camera. The Ursa produces such a, it, it, it's such a filmic look. It's not, it's super organic. It's not like the red where it's a super, I, I don't want to say that it's not a filmic look, but it's more punchy. It's more contrasty. It, it, it doesn't have that more organic look. It's more computerized in a way, which is great. It has that purpose and I love red too, but the reason why I felt like I get more use out of this camera is because I feel more attracted toward that organic, natural filmic look, and this is exactly what this camera offers. Second reason why I love this camera is the fact that Blackmagic provides you with a free download of the full version of DaVinci and Resolve. Now I know this isn't specific to this camera, but what I do have to say is the fact that Blackmagic offers and gives you a free download to the professional version studio of DaVinci Resolve is absolutely amazing. So being a Premiere Pro user for years now and being able to say that I comfortably can use that program kind of inside and out and I know everything about it, I know I'm not the only one to say that it is nearly impossible to switch programs. Mentally, physically, it's one of those things where you're just, you, you literally don't want to do it. I'm going to be honest, after about a week or two, I hadn't touched Premiere at all. I felt so much in love with Resolve. I was editing everything, I was coloring everything, and it really just, it, it re-inspired me to learn something new, especially in the coloring aspect. I found myself a lot when I wasn't inspired to go shoot a full video or full anything, I would just go out and practice some composition, practice some lighting things, and just focus on a still frame. So when I get back home, I could practice coloring it because personally I feel as a director of photography, as a cinematographer, you want to take yourself to the next level, you want to take yourself seriously, you have to understand color grading, you have to understand how you could push your image. Depending on what camera you have, you need to know the limits of it and what you can do with it so you can communicate better. If you do have a colorist, you have the ability to communicate with that person, or if you get hired to do the coloring yourself, you have the knowledge to color properly. And not saying Premiere isn't great with coloring, I know the Lumetri scope is great, but when I got this camera, it comes with RAW, and you can't really do that in Premiere without buying a plug-in. So having DaVinci Resolve with the built-in B-RAW uh, capabilities was absolutely perfect for me. So the third reason why I love this camera is just for the functionality and the ergonomics of it. For me, this camera is perfect as far as button layouts and menu settings. Um, and you don't really have to open the LCD screen to adjust anything. You could just do it right on the fly right here, like ISO. You can change the shutter speed. You can change the white balance right here. You can do playback, audio, everything is right here. And then if you do need to open this up, you have the exact same menu settings right here, plus the LCD screen. Something really awesome that I found to be really beneficial coming from a Sony camera is the ease of the menu settings here. Blackmagic made the menu very user-friendly and there's not very many options that they give you, which I find to be great because I don't have to go searching for things. They really lay everything out so everything is super accessible and you don't need to spend too much time changing anything because sometimes when you're working you need to change something on the fly, you don't want to spend a couple minutes searching for things. So one thing I really admire about Blackmagic's design 
on the Ursa is just the simplicity of the menu and how easy it is to navigate everything. Now within the menu settings, something that I really find to be super beneficial from the Ursa is just the capabilities of changing your resolution, changing your aspect ratio, the quality of your image. The native resolution is 4.6K on this camera, but you can go all the way down to 1080p. And within that, they have a bunch of different other options like uh, 240 aspect ratio, they have a 3K anamorphic mode. Uh, you can go all the way down to 1080 if you're doing a long form interview and you need to run a record time of, I don't know, a couple hours or an hour, whatever it is, and you don't need to take up all that storage, drop it down to 1080. Now something also really, really cool that they offer is the ability to change the compression ratios and the quality. So something that I typically shoot at is 4.6K at a five to one ratio. Now that's kind of in the middle as far as the quality. The highest quality is three to one. The next goes five to one, eight to one, and then 12 to one. And lastly, the LCD screen that comes with the camera is very responsive. I haven't had any problems with it yet. I do recommend getting an external monitor just to see what you're looking through because the screen isn't so big. But I do have to say just as far as touch responsiveness, it is very quick and I haven't had any problems with it. So as far as ergonomics go, I know that this camera isn't the most small or box-like or, I don't know, I feel like boxes are pretty popular right now. The Alexa May, the Komodo, the, I feel like there's something else. Um, I don't know, but boxes I feel like are pretty, pretty, uh, pretty popular right now and this is certainly not a box. And the ergonomics is a little weird. It is big, it's bulky, it, it is pretty heavy. Um, but that's something that I wanted in a camera. Now, coming from a Sony a7 III where you could pretty much lift it with a single finger, you can't do that with this. And being able to have multiple different grip styles, like having to hold it on the side here, or being able to hold it on the top, while also gripping on the bottom and having some rails here to use it as a follow focus and just moving your zoom, I find is great. And this camera really, it fits my shooting style because I typically like to stick my hand on the right hand side and kind of just stick this right in my armpit where the battery lays. And then I just use my left hand on the rail, focus, zoom, and I look at the screen and I'm moving. But if I need to get any sort of lower shots or anything, just pop my hand right onto the, the handle here. And now I am swinging right here. I am swinging. Now I know this camera doesn't appeal to a lot of people because they don't like the shape of it. It's very weird. But for me, I found that I really did like this and it fit my shooting style a lot. Um, I know that this is a great camera for over the shoulder if you do have that pad. I typically don't shoot over the shoulder that much, so I don't have that, but as far as handheld, I really do like this camera, but one thing I have to say is, if you're shooting a lot of handheld on this camera, make sure you're going to the gym. You gotta get strong. You gotta work out your forearms, work out your wrists, stretch, because this thing hurts after a while, especially if you don't have an easy rig. I'm not gonna lie, it's not easy. But if you want this camera, you wanna do it, work out, you get a little bit stronger. So the fourth reason why I love this camera is just the fact that it has built-in NDs. Now, I know a lot of cinema cameras have built-in NDs and it's pretty common now, but that was something that I didn't have coming from a mirrorless or DSL, DSL, DSLR world. You have to have some sort of variable ND on top, or if you didn't have variable, you'd have to change every time you switch lenses, whatever it is. Having the capabilities of just turning a knob, just a simple knob and you're getting up to six stops of ND is crazy. A lot of the shoots that I do are very run and gun documentary style and you don't have time to switch filters all the time. So if you're shooting inside and then you have to go outside really quick, all you have to do is just turn a knob and you're good. So having built-in NDs is just great. I didn't really realize the benefit until I had it in my possession because I just used the variable ND on my Sony and I thought that was phenomenal. But when I had to switch lenses, I had to change the filter. I do all those things. And I know on bigger sets, you'll have to change filters and you'll have map box and all those things. But for the time being and shooting on smaller budget, run and gun type of documentary stuff, having internal NDs is absolutely game changing. So the fifth reason why I love this camera is for the production value and the quality that it provides. Like most cinema cameras, you'll have some people walk by and they're just like, dude, it's a sick camera, bro. And I'm like, thanks, dude. Appreciate that. But besides that, you could literally take this camera on any size set. The versatility that you can get from this camera is seriously unlike any other cinema camera in its realm. One of the biggest benefits of having this camera over any of the other cinema cameras in this space is the fact that you can change from the native EF mount to a PL mount. Now I have a video uh, I did before, I'll link it right here, 
on how I switched the camera EF mount to the PL. So if you want or are interested in doing that, I have a video explaining how to do that properly. But that is probably one of the biggest benefits of having this camera is you could take this on such a high level shoot and you could also take it down to your bare bones indie shoot. Another great aspect of this camera going back to the PL mount is the fact that this camera can shoot in 3K anamorphic mode, which means when you switch to the PL mount and you add an anamorphic lens, you could switch the menu setting from 4.6K to the 3.2 anamorphic mode. Uh, that's at a 4.3 aspect ratio and it uh, de-squeezes the image in camera. No other camera can do this. And that is something that really will set you apart from all the other people that have cinema cameras in this world is the fact that you can de-squeeze anamorphic mode inside this camera. So another great tool that Blackmagic has in this camera is called B-RAW, and that's Blackmagic's format for raw video. You have that option as, as well as ProRes. Something that I find to use, that I use pretty regularly is B-RAW. I like the raw capabilities and being able to use that in DaVinci Resolve and have the option, if needed, to change things you really do have full freedom and full capability to do whatever you want in that raw atmosphere. So for personal projects and passion projects, I typically shoot only in raw, but if I have a client work or if I'm doing something where someone else is editing or color grading, I will always shoot in ProRes just for the workflow capabilities and the ease of kind of distributing the clips because everyone can edit in ProRes, Pro but not everyone can edit in B-RAW. So the last thing I wanna mention that has really helped me in my production has been the fact that I've, I've been able to run a boom mic or any sort of condenser mic directly into this camera. Now it has two built-in XLR ports, which is awesome and all cinema cameras really do have that. That's what kind of separates them from the DSLR mirrorless world. What I do have to say is if you're on a run and gun shoot documentary, having built-in XLRs where you could add your own condenser mic, or if you're doing an interview, have your own boom mic set right to the camera, it'll save you so much time, so much stress, especially in the editing booth as well. So the sixth reason why I love this camera is just the fact that it makes me happy. I know it sounds corny, but I, I, I know I don't want to, I don't want to sound like the guy that's, that's like, I got the new gear now. I'm so happy. I got to get the next gear if I want to be happier and I want to do this. That's not what I mean. What I'm saying is this, this thing right here, this, it, it inspires me every single day. Looking at this camera, it inspires me to go shoot. I feel that if your, if your equipment doesn't inspire you, if you don't want to pick up your camera, how are you going to get out and shoot? I found myself sometimes in a rut because I just didn't want to shoot at all or I didn't want to do anything, but I have yet to ever feel a sense of doubt or a sense, a, a sense of disappointment coming from this owning this camera. And I always look at it and I'm just amazed at how how much I love this thing. And it, it, it pushed me to a level that I didn't think I'd get to. And it's pushing me to a level that I hope to get to one day as well. And it, it really has, it's unlocked doors for me already. Just having this camera allowed me opportunity to shoot different things already. Something about holding this camera just really makes me feel happy inside in it. It's something that I really love and it inspires me every single day. So take everything I said today with a grain of salt because these are all things that I find to be things that I personally love about this camera. They might not be right for you, they might not be right for that guy, but they might be right for this person over here. So if you're on the market for a camera, definitely try different cameras out, rent things or go to a store and just hold it. Run with it, squat with it, lunge with it, do all things that you'd shoot with it because if you're holding it and you're doing all these things and it doesn't feel right, that's not the camera for you. So if I could just add any sort of recommendation towards the end of this video would be, if you're in the market for a new camera, test it out, find the benefits for you, make sure it's right for you, your shooting style, the projects you're doing, and you'll be perfectly happy with what you choose. So hopefully you guys found some benefits in today's video and maybe for some of you, it brought you closer to buying this camera. And for some of you, you're like, I don't want this camera at all anymore. And that's fine. That's fine, that's okay. But hopefully you guys learned something. Thank you so much. I am so stuffy, so I'm about to go take an allergy pill. Whew. Until next time, thank you so much. Peace.